But with the, the fact that we won the game, uh, respect Texas A&M a great deal. Uh, we respect their team. They have a terrific team. There's a reason they're 7-0. and And they have a blend of experience, talent, great size. And uh, I'm just happy on our end that we were able to embrace the challenge. I thought this was our best defensive effort of the year. And uh, being able to win away from McHale, neutral court. And I know it's favored Arizona, but last year we played in Houston. So uh, this is, you know, something that you want to do to prepare your team for bigger things down the road. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I think we continue to progress from maybe the team we were in the Bahamas. And uh, as you guys can see by watching us, we still have some things we have to do better. But a big reason we won is, you know, these two guys up here. And DeAndre, statistically, he might have had better games this year, but you got to realize they're, they're double team and they're triple team and they're crowding and that opens things up for his teammates and you know Dylan he's one of the teammates who had some great looks because of that and he took advantage of them you know 13 points out of 67 was a big reason we won that's what Dylan had so um, also it's always great to go through these situations at the end of the game we were going to foul uh, obviously on purpose but when you do that, you have to do it right at the half court line. And uh, we had, you know, a younger group. We didn't communicate. Parker got back screened, and we ended up fouling a three point shooter, uh, which you never want to do. So that's a lesson learned, and I'm glad we could uh, learn it with a win. How often do you practice those fouling situations and like games like that? We talk about it a lot. Um, we. Uh, I'd say we do it a handful of times, probably in 40 practices, but these guys know the call and they know what to do. But there's a storyline on that. And 13 years ago, we were playing Ohio State in the NCAA tournament. We were up uh, three points and we had a guy at the foul line. I could have called a timeout and didn't. He missed the free throw. And uh, Ron Lewis from Ohio State hit about a 40 footer at the buzzer. And since then, you know, we always elect to foul. and. Uh, Tonight's really the first night it almost didn't work. I mean, I'd like to knock on wood when I say it, but it's been good to us, and uh, obviously that's how we play it down the stretch. Sean, do you see the progress you're making going to be accelerated here, or are you fine with the slow progression of becoming better? I mean, I don't know how fast or slow it is, but we're playing some really good teams. You know, I mean, we've played, you think about who we played in the Bahamas. Um, you know, we just played at UNLV in front of a great crowd. I think they have a good team played here in, in Phoenix against Texas A&M. On Saturday, we play Alabama. We're at New Mexico. We have UConn. I mean, we're playing good teams. So, you know, it's one thing to learn, but you're trying to win as well. And I think there's, there's no better way than to have both good competition and uh, the ability to learn. But you can ask these guys. Uh, we're working really hard in practice. I mean, we, we've had some games, but it's not like we're just shooting around. And I think some of the practices that we've had have helped us. John, you got them in foul trouble early in the second half. And what did you do to do that? And how did that impact you? I don't know if we did anything different. You know, I think the theme at halftime, and, and these guys know that, is against a team like Texas A&M, who's so sound defensively and so big, we have to run good offense. You know, you can't just take them. You know, I'm going to go get my own. Or let's throw to DeAndre on the right block. He, they're not going to let him catch it. And, they're a good defensive team. So everything we did had to have good offense attached to it. And as the game wore on, when we had good offensive possessions, I think for the most part, we, we got some good shots. When we didn't run good offense, um, we, didn't, we didn't get good shots. We had three turnovers in the second half. I would say that's maybe the biggest reason that we won. They were all disaster turnovers. But we had eight in the first half. And I think playing this game with 11 turnovers was a good deal. 24 from the foul line, I think. Oh, yep. We get to the foul line. I mean, you know, especially with DeAndre, there's a lot of things within the game that the other team has to do to, to take him away. Like I said, he may have got nine shots, but you have to realize that they're working their entire possession to prevent him from getting the ball. And when he gets it, they're crowding him, and it, it opens things up. And we've talked about that. Dylan took advantage of it tonight, and it was good to see. What's it say for his... Tonight's game and maybe the two games that you guys traveled in the Bahamas. Uh, do you feel like a different team? And what was the difference? And uh, yeah, thank you. If you could step close to the microphone, that'd be great. I'll say um, the bigs down low, Tyler Davis and 
Uh, Robert Williams did a good job of um, three quartering me on the post. Well, I mean, on a positive side, you guys won. Huh? I mean, on a positive side, you guys oh, won. Oh, that we won. Yeah. Well, what felt differently about this team in this effort? Today? Oh, I mean, guys stepped up. You know, like Dylan Smith, he stepped up, made big shots. Uh, Brandon, Brandon Randolph at the free throw line made big shots and big decisions. Uh, Parker, Jackson Carwright, um, gathered, gathered us together and just kept us on what we have to do down the stretch. And I think that's what made us. Yeah, uh, he's down the line. Sorry, I was wondering if you could follow up on, on the matches with those two big guys and, and, and particularly what you thought of that play when uh, they just got the, the turnover there. Yeah. For the travel? Yeah, the travel too, yeah. I mean, I mean what was the question? Did you think he did, or was there anything? You know? oh, did he travel? Yeah, I think I think he traveled. But I mean, did anything you were doing defensively where you thought maybe that was a possibility, or you know? Uh, yeah, I thought the ball was coming into him. Uh, I saw the uh, the guard penetrated down the lane, and I was just um, anticipating him to come to the rim. You had him like the last five or six possessions. Uh, what did you try to do? With uh, you know, we had we were our defense is red, so we really want uh, wanted me to stay on him, really guard him pretty well, and just just trap him as best as we can. Coach, you notice the uh, it's now going to be blue <laughs> since he told you it's red. <laughs> 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 Dylan, what was the atmosphere like there uh, out there like tonight? And again, if you could step up close to the microphone, that'd be great. Describe the atmosphere tonight with uh, Um It was good. You know, a lot of Arizona fans. Uh, they support it as well, so hey, Arizona fans are known to kind of travel with the team, so that's great. This gave us an advantage. Sure, can you talk about the importance of having Dylan and PJC and the other guys, other than the big two, to step up and kind of get you through this? You know, Alonzo let the game come to him. You know, it wasn't his night. I mean, that's the other thing about about tonight. Um, you know, he was two for seven from the floor, one for six from from three, and we were still able to win, which is great. And, you know, on different nights over the long course of the season, and it's not always going to be DeAndre at 25, uh, Alonzo at 24. You know, there's balance is going to seep in. And, you know, in big plays as well. Parker didn't shoot the ball well tonight. And statistically, you know, Texas A&M defends the three-point shot as well as any team in the country. But the one that Parker needed to make, one of the biggest shots of the game, right corner in front of our bench, he delivered. And I think, you know, that's experience not letting five or six misses get in the way of a good shot. He took it with confidence and he, and he made it. And, you know, the other thing I think that our team did a good job, when, when you have to inbound the ball against that type of press, and they have a really good one, you have to be poised. And, you know, we used the timeout. We got the ball in. We didn't turn it over. We went to the foul line. So, you know, any type of turnover in that late game situation could take the game and favor them. So our execution down the stretch, the fact we played with three turnovers was big. And, you know, the other stat is rebounding. You know, really back-to-back -back games were even, but the two teams that we're rebounding against are great. I mean, when you look at the front lines of UNLV and Texas A&M, they're, they're as good as it gets in college basketball, being able to get second shots. And our guys did a good job. Obviously, DeAndre had 10 rebounds, eight on defense. And uh, that really helped us. Coach, you, you notice the uh, GCU fans getting behind you guys and trying to distract the shooter at the end of the game? You know, I learned a lot about GCU when we played them last year. We have a lot of respect for them. They're the only group of people in my nine years at Arizona that I've ever heard in McHale. I've never heard a crowd, even a, maybe one person yell something, where they actually had, had a, uh, a patch of fans. And they love college basketball. and. Uh, you know, it's great for our state. Dan Marley has done a, an amazing job there. John, yeah. as far as the, the effort that you were talking about last week that was lacking those couple of weeks, where do you see it at now after tonight and after the UNLV game? Let me clarify this. I'm not necessarily accusing DeAndre Ayton of not trying hard or Dylan Smith doesn't care. Sometimes guys have to learn how hard you have to play. I mean, when you're in the Bahamas and you're playing three games and three nights, it's not easy, and if you're you're new to this, even if you're really talented, it, it takes a little bit of time to figure out what does coach really mean. And I think the last two games, these guys have a much better understanding of what it takes to win, what it takes to win on the road against against good teams. So our effort is good, our, our practices have been good, 
you know, these guys' attitudes are, are great. And uh, the fact that we were able to, to, uh, to come here and win tonight is a, is a big shot. But, you know, for us, our schedule is the real thing. We play Alabama at home on Saturday, and now we have to be able to handle these two wins, get back. These guys have a big week academically, and uh, we have a really what I always call our first really big game at home where a lot of people are going to care nationally. So we have to be ready for that. Dylan, how, much, how much better do you feel like you've gotten just from a month ago, and how much does experience in games like this one and the UNLV game kind of help you, do you feel like? Um, just... I feel like I've gotten better just the whole time on the Arizona, just learning, uh, learning from different things, like seeing like what not to do last year, and just gaining coach's trust. So just him telling me, me with me, telling me things I can do to help the team win. That's all it's about. Sean, what does it say about DeAndre's poise that he sees these double and triple teams and he never seems to really push or, or panic or anything? Yeah, no, he's one of his gifts, and, and I've, talked to him, I've talked to our team a lot about it, is he does not turn the ball over. And it's not as if it's easy. A lot of times, very talented big guys early, they, they are high turnover players. He's not. And some of his passes really lead to great shots for guys like Dylan. And that's part of the storyline tonight. He might not have had as big of a night, 13 and 10 is a good night. But what he took on in the challenge when he got the ball, and really Dusan as well. And I thought Dusan did a great job. And Dusan had 13 points as well. So between them, they had 26 points and only two turnovers. And DeAndre also had three assists. So being able to play inside out, getting them the ball, because they're, they're, they're unselfish, and in DeAndre's case, he's, he's an excellent passer.